Today's episode of the Bill Simmons Podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor. And guess what? We have a deal for the first timers, the people who have not gone to the SeatGeek app, the people who have not gone to SeatGeek.com. First of all, what are you doing? You got to be crazy. But first timers, go buy baseball tickets and the first time, $10 off. All you have to do is put in the promo code BSMLB, $10 off. First first time you buy baseball tickets, what's better than that? Go, do it. SeatGeek app, SeatGeek.com, promo code BSMLB. We are also brought to you by Larry Wilmer's new podcast, Black on the Air, and Cousin Sal's new podcast. What's Cousin Sal's podcast name? Against All Odds. Against All Odds with Cousin Sal is blanking. Cousin Sal and Jimmy won an incredible amount of money on Dancing with the Stars this week. I don't even want to tell you the exact figure. It's You wouldn't believe it. They, I think there's been 18 years of Dancing with the Stars, and they've won on nine of the 18, including this year on Rashad Jennings. How do they know? 14 to 1 odds. Anyway, check out those two new podcasts, and uh, don't forget to check out TheRinger.com, our NBA draft guide, because the NBA finals are, are going to be starting in a week, and there's going to be just a week of dead games, so you might as well read about the draft. Go to our draft guide. We spend an incredible amount of time on it. We are putting pieces up constantly. We're up, get, updating the uh, draft boards all the time with Kevin O'Connor, Jonathan Jerks, and Danny Chow, our draft experts. So go there. Check it out. It's on TheRinger.com. And that's it. Uh, coming up, Bill Burr, but first Pearl Jam. Mm-hmm. Bill Burr in the house. This is this is our second podcast together. Yes, it is. Yeah, you had the, you have F F is for family. What day is it? May thirtieth. May thirtieth. The second season of F is for Family comes out, and this time we have ten episodes rather than just six. I think the first season they just wanted to see. All right, what is this? Because it was kind of weird for a comic to do an animated show. Yeah. Because it hadn't, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of guys that did them. Louis Anderson, all the way back to. Uh, uh, Bill Cosby and stuff, but just they hadn't done it in a while, so they're kind of like, eh. so I think they just were like, ah, we'll give him six. Yours was set in the past too. Yeah, so maybe they were maybe they were dubious whether that might work. Yeah, it there worked. was a, there was a bunch of red flags, but Netflix, thank God, <laughs> went with it and let us do whatever the hell we wanted to do. And um, yeah. we brought the great Mike Price from uh, The Simpsons on board, and that's when it took off. He's one of the creators of the show, hmm. and um, yeah, so we got we got ten more coming. Well, you accomplished one of your goals, which was uh, we had to decide that my son couldn't watch it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because yeah, it was it was too it was too far over the line. But That's now good. he's a year older. I think he's ready. Nine and, and a half. Old? He's nine and a half. Yeah, I'd wait. Come on, I'd wait. You'd still wait. <laughs> <laughs> if he was the youngest and had like you know some teenage siblings if he does then okay. I, then that be then that's a different kind of nine-year-old but like taking the beach as the oldest as a nine-year-old jumping and you know there's mm. that weird dynamic you know i saw in the preview trailer like uh there's a guy in a bathrobe and his balls were kind of hanging out underneath the bathrobe a little his, bit the head of his dick I mean, well, that's what yeah, it, it goes by real quick I, yeah. uh and i was thinking like that is in <laughs> that is in my son's wheelhouse that is his kind of humor oh, so okay. i'm gonna let him watch it we started early mean, in the Simmons house. There you go. I like it. Because uh, they're going to find it anyway. All right. My I just son, want to take responsibility right, if that, he starts uh, cursing his brains out. But All right. Let's, uh, there's a lot to cover for us um, since the last time I talked to you. But we might as well start with the fact that you, you have a child that now probably she's four and a half months, which uh-huh. means I'm going to say seven weeks ago she stared at you for the first time with that look like, hey, it's that guy. I like yeah. that guy. Yeah. And then that's it. You're done for life when that yep. happens. That's pretty much it. And yeah. now, uh, but she's also at that age where she's totally attached to her wonderful mother. So it's like they when I hold be. her, she looks at me and then she just is like, just like a surveillance camera looking at my mother, I'm a, I'm a, my <laughs> wife, her mother, Jesus yeah. Christ, Bill, um, all <laughs> over the, uh, all the room. So, um, and my wife can make her laugh and I can't, I'm bombing with my own kid. I'm like stealing my wife's jokes. It's, it's basically faces and holding them up over your head and, and yeah. dropping them quickly and then bringing them back up. That's yeah, really she's starting to turn over up. and she's yeah. getting ready to go. So we agreed that we were going to look at, uh, child gates and all that stuff we gotta we gotta go trump on her we gotta we gotta wall her in (laughs) (laughs) you know and uh you know 
childproof the outlets and stuff. But it's it's you're awesome. Like, and you're I like ha- four months I'm, away from that. And I have. Well, I don't want. I don't. I don't want to get caught flat-footed because she's right. already rolling up. It's already to the point we can't walk away if she's on the bed because she figured that out. She gets her legs up in the air and she just kind of does a little lean to the side and then right. that's it then she gets on her stomach and once she puts together like oh i just keep going this way yeah then you then know i'll sit there and yeah i want her to city. learn about gravity when she's like standing on the floor not you know up on a king size bed mm. it's like a two-story drop at her age so we definitely well you know, listen stuff's gonna happen attention. that you're not gonna like you're gonna have about nine of these I understand. You have a kid, you I have understand. nine of those. Why, why do go, parents Whoa. always have to bring the fear in? I know, I, it's I know it's happens. coming. You don't it's think not I a think fear. that? It's not Dude, a I fear. went out on the porch one day with her, just holding her, and I immediately thought, what if a bird of prey came, snatched her, and took her away? I'm already scared <laughs> enough. I don't need a vet here. Oh, dude, wait till this in a few yeah. months. Yeah, I don't I'm need like that. like the Chris Chelios apparent thing. Oh, right. Just wait. <laughs> I've been around the block. Yeah, this is a business kid. Don't get too attached to these colors. Yeah. Could uh, you imagine having two of these? Definitely. Okay, good. Definitely. So That's I, good. Some yeah. people get scared off after the one, and they're like, I'm good. The only thing I'm scared is, is she's so chill and mellow that usually the next one comes and is like, you know, the Tasmanian devil. Yeah. So um, so then that's usually, from what I've talked to with parents, that's about a year and a half of your life before you can even begin to be like, hey, you're kind of being a douche. Can you knock right. it off? <laughs> <laughs> you're exhausting. So, but whatever. If that happens, it happens, because uh, I'm so excited to be a dad, because I always wanted to be. But I was a lunatic and whatever. I became a dad when I was supposed to, and I didn't think it was going to happen for me. So I'm glad that I didn't go down this cliched comic route of not being married, not having a family or anything like that. And, and even though it's later in life for me, um, I just didn't want to be that guy, you know, working the new Copa whenever they open that up when I'm 90, coming in there in my coffee-stained tie, you know, bitching about the green room. I didn't want to be that guy. I remember 25 years ago, I bet that, you would have a kid right before Janet Jackson. Oh, is that right? Did it, she didn't have hers yet? No, she had her. So I was no, it's like she's the other one who waited a long time. Janet Jackson. She was fifty. Oh, yeah, fifty. Imagine being a fifty-year-old and having a, and passing out a child. I can't, I can't imagine. imagine being twenty and doing it. I, I know. Just watching it, my wife. Twenty is insane. Thirty is <laughs> crazy. Fifty. Like, no, holy that was mackerel. like I saw a level of toughness in my wife that you know, I knew she was tough to argue with, but like their ability to just they are built because they're gonna have to you know they're, they're built pre-modern medicine to yes. have these things in a cave yeah so that's like the level of pain that they can uh it's human nature yeah so i was kind of i was joking with this saying like you know i used to think if an intruder came through the door I, you were going to be standing behind me after seeing that performance <laughs> i might be behind you um yeah. they're like hips this place all, the, all these all the, these laws of physics come in that we didn't even know were, were possible. Oh, yeah. No, and it's just... It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I would say a woman during childbirth and hockey players in the third and fourth rounds of the playoffs are the two toughest species we have. Yeah, I'd still Those give... Those last the, two rounds. I'd still give the edge. I would rather take a puck off the skate than... Uh, <laughs> they take them off the face. Oh, I know. Those guys That's slide the craziest. Down. They're like, oh, I, I got to come out. The puck hit my face. A slap shot. I don't know. I'll come out. I'll be, I'll be back. Do you ever play minutes. hockey? No. Oh, my God. One time. One time. I, got, I took one out. And it wasn't even. It was just a wrist shot. Yeah. It just caught me right on the side of my foot. Hit my toe. Like, my whole toe turned purple. The next one was like half the toe. And then the next toe was like just the top of the toe. And like, Ugh. it was like uh, this weird, like, unbelievable pain. And then totally numb. And then, uh, and I started, you know, like everything I do in life, I started late. I started playing hockey late. And then ever since then, I had an even more of an appreciation that I can't imagine an NHL level wrist shot. Forget about a slap shot. Like back in the day, that guy, Al McGinnis was like over a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Chelios, you know, not Chelios, sorry. Uh, um, Chara, Chara, when he had the hardest slap shot, I saw him hit some guy in the side of the foot and it was just over. This guy, I don't know where the hell he was. He made these things called skate fenders and they... They apply these plastic things. I used to wear them when I'd play pickup hockey. And if I got hit the side in the foot, they were great, these plastic things. And they claimed a lot of guys in the NHLs would wear them. They're like clear plastic. It's so weird that they protect all your body except for your feet, which is so important. And, of course, True. you know, behind your calves. And some spots in the back, it seems like. There's like a couple yeah. spots the puck can sneak in there. Yeah, it's not fun. I went to the uh, All-Star Challenge, which was for the most part terrible in February. But... Uh, they had the fastest shot competition. 
and we were behind the net and Ovechkin shot and he missed the net and it was coming right at us. Oh. And it was the most frightening moment of my life. Oh yeah. It felt like it was 300 miles an hour. I don't know how the goalies do it. Yeah. That poor guy, man, he's taking all the heat. He always seems to take the heat. It's like, no, this is the guy you need to build around. He's, he's not the problem. I was like one of the best guys in the league, the problem, but they always do that. That's like when, uh, when Isaiah missed game three and we won and the, all these people are going like, you know, are they better without him? <laughs> Should the Celtics not have Isaiah Thomas? It's the best. It's just, it. It's. I always just look at it like there is so many sports shows and there's so many hours to fill yeah. that you actually have to do that. Like you I have even, to be stupid. You almost hear it in their voice where it's just like, guys, are we really gonna try to? We're gonna commercial fish on this one. Let's throw the net out there. That's I mean, Boston sports at media in a nutshell, though. They have so many hours now. It's all day, two stations, and then everywhere. one of the TV stations is three hours at night. So they're just staring at each other going, should we do the Isaiah thing? No, that's crazy. We can't do that. We no, can't well, do maybe we need to get one segment out of it. And then All right, the cars go nuts. What side of the argument do you want to do? <laughs> can, I please, a a can I please be the guy who doesn't think that they're going to be better with, without him? Can I please be that guy? <laughs> you pay for the Chinese food. Yeah. I'll say that yeah. they're better off without him. <laughs> you owe me on the next two. <laughs> right. You owe me on the next two when they want to bench Tom Brady after a preseason <laughs> Loss where he only played the first quarter and they're asking for uh, Garoppolo again. I want to be I want to be the guy arguing for Tom Brady. There is some great Boston sports media stuff in the like 48 hours. Like Isaiah goes down, mm-hmm. and then one of the guys, I think Tony Maserati, who's on the show with Felger, had this tweet where it was basically like, "It's hard not to conclude that the Celtics and Isaiah haven't quit on the season." Meanwhile, Isaiah's got like a torn labrum in his hip. He said it's hard to conclude that what? That they haven't quit on the season. Basically, he's saying like they've oh. packed it in. And it's well, like, well, I'm pretty sure two... Isaiah's hit packed it in. I don't, know if, yeah. I don't know if he packed it in. I think that But it's also, I think that not only the Cavs were arrested, I thought they came in with a chip on their shoulder. I thought it bugged them that we were the number one seed. Yeah, and, it wasn't great. I went, I and, went to and, game one. It was over in three minutes. Yeah. I unfortunately was traveling. I think it was in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for the... Um, oh, God. The... Great town. Yeah? Oh, yeah. No, it's awesome. You, you have no idea how psyched. <laughs> everybody you lo- everybody you go goes. Canada, you must love it, though. I love it, but everybody like goes to like the major ones, and those people, as happy as they are for you to go there, n- they're never going to be happier than if you go to Saskatoon or Regina, Winnipeg. They're like psyched. Like, finally, I don't have to drive <laughs> eight hours to go to your show. But then, and then the other cities like the Toronto's, the Montreal's, and Vancouver's. When you go to those cities, what's great is just the cosmopolitan experience and like you know all these incredible restaurants and all that. Yeah. But I will tell you, dude, the food in Canada is is unbelievable, unbelievable in uh, Winnipeg specifically. You must love just putting on the Canadian Sports Center and it's like twenty eight straight minutes of oh, hockey. It's the meeting. greatest. It's the greatest. And they like. And then you draw. We would. I was working up there with this guy Nate Craig. Uh, he. Came up out of Wisconsin. He's a really good hockey player. And uh, we would drove by this basketball court, and there's all this wood like around the court. And he, and he goes, dude, that's for like a rink. They're just going to flood that. And I think when I was in Ottawa, I played on a flooded basketball rink. So it was this really small rink. And it's, it's like I can't even tell you how fun it is. Everybody who bitches about the winter, yeah. it's like if you did that, you'd actually be excited that it was getting cold out. Like I felt... Like a little kid, I did a I did a whole tour through Canada, like maybe three years ago, and I brought my hockey stuff because everybody kept going like, "Nah, dude, we got stuff." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm sure you do," and I know what that smells like, and I'm not putting that stuff on. So yeah, I hated going to and from the airport, but when I would be suiting up or whatever, just having my own stinky, sweaty stuff was, uh, you know, I'm too old. Like you get to a point as a guy, you're too old to have a roommate. You get too old to be single. There's certain things. And at some point, I don't know what age. I, I got too old to borrow somebody's hockey, stinky hockey stuff. I couldn't do it. So My son, after the 2014 playoffs, my son got super into hockey and mm-hmm. wanted to play. So we got him skates, started playing. There was like two rinks in L.A. Oh, and man, I was they, thinking they like. They be down to one. That Pick, yeah. I heard Pickwick's closing. So well, I think Pickwick clo- I think, if Pickwick closes, it's done. No, it's Valley Ice. You still got Valley Ice uh, out in Sherman Oaks. There used to be more than one cl- closed in Culver City. But anyway. Yep, Culver City, that one. I went to that one. When I did your show and Wayne Gretzky was on, he told me that they the, the Kings used to practice there. Right. And he said you could stand at the blue line, not move your feet, and you would slowly move down towards the goal because <laughs> right. it, was, it was like that uneven after all, all the earthquakes and stuff. But that was a great rink, though, man. Oh, well, the, but the thing is, I mean, it was so hard to get them to these different places. And then the ice times and everything, it was like, it just wasn't worth it. And it started to discourage him from playing. Whereas, like, if you lived in, like, Saskatchewan, 
your dad just like pours water on the yeah. driveway and you're skating I around. I mean, it's such an event. It's amazing. You know there what, aren't you any know American when, hockey players. When you're in Ottawa, they have like this little canal, you know, it's in its own. And I didn't know how deep it was. I mean, I immediately, when I started skating on it, was thinking about the omen that I was going to go underneath it. People would be digging on the ice trying to save me. But I guess it's it's only like like two feet deep. So they ju- they flood it during the winter time, and it's, it goes like right through the middle of the city. And people like skate to work. You can go get like hot chocolate and stuff. I mean, it's like it's like you're in some Christmas movie. Yeah. And they had and then they had a free outdoor rink. Like there's just these women were like figure skating. Another guy was just skating around with like a puck and stuff. And I was just. And I was like, "Do you gotta pay?" Like, nah. like, oh no, it's free. Go ahead, go yeah. have a good time. And Knock just like, out. nice, nice as hell. And um, I mean, as much as I loved it, uh, Nate, who I just worked with, like, he's like, he wants to not only move, but he wants to marry a Canadian woman. Like, he's he's in. He's just in. He's just like this. Well, is think about the nicest a basketball stuff. work that way. And none of our basketball players, all of them, if they ever like shot basketball, they would have to like drive 25 minutes to go play for an hour. Oh yeah. And buy like $500 worth and of stuff. Yeah. Just I mean, to we'd, get be started. we'd be done. We'd, they, the basketball, you just go outside, you shoot and yep. in hockey, you know, no wonder the Canadians are I always still hated killing them. us. Although we have more Americans than we've had probably at any point that are good. I have to be honest with you. Once they got, all the uh, players from around the world and most of the names became difficult to yeah. pronounce. That's when I kind of like back in the day, it was just Canadians and a few Americans. Yeah. And then um, once they opened it up, which has oh, been a great thing. It's been great for the NBA. It's, you know, we, the more, like more the a more, great thing in the eighties. I remember really resenting the Stastny brothers. Oh, you didn't like that? I was well, just I like, the who Stast- are these guys? Why oh, I they- thought they, I would just assume they were Canadian the guys, they play for the Nordiques, right? Yeah, yeah. Marion, Anton, and no, Peter, they were, right? They were like Czechoslovakia or something. Oh, they were. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. And they were all in the same line. Like, what is the odds of that? Other than like the Sutter brothers were like six out of seven. Right. All made it to the uh, And you know a couple the of them NHL. barely made it and were like black sheepy. But they just, they at that all, point, no, they just bet on the Sutters. Good. They, they really... They were all kind of good to like really was. good, to like yeah. all-stars. They were... Um, I, you know, they were just all, I think, I, I've seen this story like a zillion times. I can't believe I forgot it. Or, but it, it, there was just a bunch of, uh, they grew up on a farm, you know, did all that farm work all day. And then their idea of playing was beating the crap out of each other, playing pickup right. hockey. All of them was, had like faces that looked like they'd been broken. Nah, yeah, they were cool. They, they're definitely. You know, he, so he was the Kings coach, Daryl, and his son was special needs and would wear a Kings jersey every game. And they would show him on the Jumbotron. Mm-hmm. And after like year three, year four, he became like the most popular Kings fan. And when oh. they needed to get the crowd going, they would show him Chris Sutter. And he would do this whole thing, like this Hulk Hogan, he'd Hulk up, he'd go oh, crazy. That's great. And the crowd would go bonkers. And then they fired Daryl Sutter this spring. And it's like, it's I, I've never seen anything like this before because it's like all the Kings fans are like, so we're going to lose Chris, right? Like Chris was oh. like the guy at the games. So they lose him because they fired his dad. I can't imagine he would go to the games. <laughs> like, I can't imagine the Kings didn't see that coming because eventually they should have like hired it's him. It's gonna and, happen. Like, yeah, yeah, you're gonna go your separate ways with the coach. It's a, it's a double loss. But hockey coaches never seem to last more than a couple of years, except for the the true greats. Somebody tweeted something funny saying uh, every every coach. And the uh, NHL looks like uh, looks like a Bond villain. And I started looking. <laughs> that kind of is true. <laughs> it kind of is true. But uh, hey, how about the Yankees, huh? You don't like that? I like I like that they're relevant again because I I didn't feel like I cared about the Sox Yankee rivalry anymore. That's never and, and fun. It, but now we're the evil empire, man. I know. Now we're it's more like, like we're the, the 03 Yankees. We're, we're the exactly we're the inept the, yeah. the inept empire. When Steinbrenner, rest his soul, was saying uh, he nothing he liked better. I used to always joke than a 37 year old future Hall of Famer. He loved to pick up that last contract and give him an extra 10 million bucks. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and there was some. There was some. I'm not going to name the names, but there was some bad endings of careers during that. Those early two thousand when when they the Kevin Brown, lo- Randy Johnson era. Yeah, yeah, all of those guys, and then even like uh, what was his face from the Orioles? He just couldn't get lucky because uh, he was great for them. Um, uh, the pitcher, Messina, Mike Messina. Ma- oh, yeah, Mike. he just was one of those just bad luck guys where he didn't he didn't get one with them. But the Reds, I I, I feel like we're going to gel. And we're going to turn it around. We're going to go on a run. Um, but, like, I, how the fuck did the Yankees always find? They always find that guy. Like, 
He can't just be good. He's got to be like a hero. Like this guy, like... Aaron Judge. Yeah. He's all like humble and stuff. He's like a six foot seven right fielder. I read this whole thing in Sports Illustrated. He's like, where does he live? He like lives in a hotel in Times Square because he's not sure if he's going to make the team yet. Yeah, he's got 18 and he's homers. he's all humble and yeah. he's handling the media effortlessly. It's like, is this going to be another Roy Hobbs Yankee guy? You know it is. Like, I just wish they could have guys that I could hate again. Like, I, I couldn't hate Jeter. I mean, as much as in the beginning, I had trouble hating him too. Yeah, it's just he was. What, you're basically you, you hate greatness. I mean, what is he doing? He's doing his job. Yeah, he doesn't talk trash. Classy guy. I love when he would argue a call too. He never got in the ump's face. He had this thing. He kind of grabbed like the ear hole on his helmet, and he would sort of stand perpendicular to him, and he just kind of he wouldn't get in his face, right. and just kind of in his own way, handled it with respect. Let him know that he didn't agree with it. I never saw him get it. Do you ever get ejected? I don't think I ever saw him get ejected. No, the smartest NBA players do that too. They don't get mad right away. They kind of walk over and they put the hand on the side and just kind of rip into the ref. Yeah. Like, God, that was fucking terrible. You're the worst. But do they like, say kind of stuff like breath? that? Yeah. They'll get mad. They'll get mad at the refs, but the smart ones, the won't, refs don't want to be shown show, up. Don't show them up. Yeah. They don't want to see, they don't want to replay with Kobe yelling the F bomb at you and, you know, it's on Twitter. <laughs> but. Yeah, no, the thing with the Red Sox, you know, they brought this guy Dombrowski in to run the team. And he's one of those guys like, prospects, they might not pan out. Let's turn them into stars now, which works sometimes. But right. when it does work out, you feel like you almost cheated. Like, Chris Sale's amazing. We gave up two of our best prospects for him. He's amazing. So what but saying, a, was, did we get him as a free agent? No, we traded for him. We, we traded, traded for him. Okay. We traded uh, two of the best prospects on the, in the organization. Okay. So... You know, that's kind of the, the big market bully move, right? Where you're like, ah, we're going to take your best pitcher, but here's some two prospects, and they might work out, they might right. not. And then they traded for Pomerantz, which was another one of those big market moves where you go, all right, here are two prospects, we'll take this guy too. And in that case, he's been terrible. Mm -hmm. One of the prospects is already starting for the Padre. It's like, you can't win either way with this thing. You know, sales are so, awesome. So how, we, we spent like $210 million. Cause I, Something I, like that. Yeah, and, but when I look on the field, I don't feel dirty. I don't feel like super. No, we we. Uh, it does. It feels we a little like what the we Yankees. Were I, we talking we, about, but we had already done that. We did that in 07. Like 07 was ridiculous. See, I always thought after we won three World Series, I just would have been like, let's just build around the kids. Everybody's cool with that. Just yeah. Just stockpile awesome young kids, and we can watch them. I have I've only seen a few games. I keep raving about our outfield like it's the most talented since you know. No, and nobody's Rice really hitting it. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're gonna come out of it though. They're just having the slump early. It's better than a collapse in September. We'll see. Well, I told you, Ben Intende has the last time we did this. Ben Intende has a chance to be the all-time ladies' man out of any Boston sports guy. Who? Ben Intende. Andrew Ben Intende. I don't know who that is. <laughs> you really haven't watched the Red Sox. No, I haven't. <laughs> You've been touring. I know. I know like Xander Bogarts. I know Pedroia. Uh, what else? So Ben Intende is the Fred Lynn. He's kind of Fred Lynn. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Italian yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just, From yeah, Cincinnati. That's, a, that's a tough name to remember when you only see yeah, a couple I, games listen, a year. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, he, he, I have seen. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of potential to... to uh, right. Well, I always... This is always the time of the year I'm watching the Stanley Cup Finals, NBA Final. And then I'm gonna. Uh, then I get Take a break. Then I get into the baseball. I, I get, get in a. I start really getting into it after NBA playoffs because yeah. it's like that late June. All of a sudden, there's no sports on. It's like all right, baseball. Right. But it's baseball should not be a 162 game sport. It's pretty insane. Oh, that's another thing that Aaron Judge he loves the grind. <laughs> Just everything about us is like this guy is like. He's Sounds just, like you like Aaron Judge. He, Maybe you should switch he's teams. He's airtight. He's airtight. No, I, I am fast. Dude, you can't, you have to take yourself out of being a Red Sox fan and be like, okay, all right, we messed up. We sell, we sell Babe Ruth, right? Then they have Garrig, and then they go to DiMaggio. Then they go to Mantle, and then Steinbrenner comes in and he, you know, he buys up the Oakland A's, but the Oakland A guy didn't want to pay, so whatever. He had it flamed out with Dave Winfield and all of that type of stuff. And Try then, to frame Dave Winfield. Yeah. I was trying to say it nicely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got it. Then they go Jeter. Sued. Then Jeter leaves. He's gone for one year. One year. They don't have the uh, do the right stuff astronaut guy. And then in comes this guy, like to just to fill the void. And it's uh, and it's always from their system too, other than the Babe Ruth thing. But like it's always from their system. And and you know. Well, this was out of nowhere because I'm in this crazy American League only fantasy league where you draft minor leaguers and mm -hmm. like this guy in our league got traded 
for Mike Trout by this team that was trying to win the title. So he traded Aaron Judge for Mike Trout. And none of us were like, oh, you just gave up the next Babe Ruth. Right. Like, it just was not not like that. Yeah. So it happens. That's the thing with prospects. Sometimes I know, but they how many, blossom. But, but yeah, but here's the thing, though. The, the fact that they've been able to do it so consistently. Do you realize that the 1980s was the only... I'm like a total nerd for stats and stuff. Like the 1980s is the only decade the Yankees haven't won a title. How insane is that? Well, in this decade. This decade, well, it's not over yeah. yet, is all I'm saying. I still feel like the, the two titles that bother, actually there's three that bother me the most as a sports fan because it ruined the narrative I wanted in my head. One was the Yankees. <laughs> that's, that's very mature that you, yeah, you yeah. realize that. I'm selfish. The 09 Yankees bothers me because it would have been so much fun if they just never won a title with A-Rod. And A Rod was credited as the guy who literally ruined Yankee pride. And I was kind of hoping that after the collapse in '04, that they never won another one for a while, and it would be like, and there would be, I mean. be some sort of thing like that. And I wasn't, but I wasn't going. just going to put it on A Rod. I want just. All right, yeah. so yeah, so the combo of the '04 comeback and A Rod, and then it's just it, the Yankee fans become like sad Mets fans. Like the Mets yeah. fans are sad now, and the Mets made us really unhappy in the mid '80s, and now kind of come around yeah, and now they become you can sad hate Mets again. fans because they've always been like the you know the ugly sister and that I town. don't hate Mets fans I hated them for years so that was one title another one was when Peyton Manning beat Rex Grossman in the Super Bowl if 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 Brady just holds on and completes the third and three and Manning never wins the Super Bowl and then finally gets it as this decrepit guy on Denver who the oh, defense yeah, wanted yeah. to him that would have been fantastic and then I, w- I really am bummed that Kobe won a title without Shaq because that would have been fun to make jokes about. Ah, oh, you only yeah. won because of Shaq. Yeah. You never won one on your own. <laughs> well, at some point, you just got to admit you were wrong that maybe Kobe could play a little bit. I was bit. wrong on all three, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Kobe's too selfish. She can't. I was writing my book, and I was actually I had to hand it in in the spring. And the last chapter was about the secret of basketball. And I go to Bill Walton and he's like my guru. And right. and we can't agree on how Kobe played and all this stuff. But then Kobe had just won the title and it completely changed, you know, what I, what the theme of my book was that unselfish play, chemistry, teamwork. That's what always is going to trump people like Wilt and Kobe. And then Kobe won the title. Yeah. I'm taking like 28 shots a game. Well, well, everyone wasn't around. That, yeah, that was that awful game seven, right? Where they won it from the line? That was the, the 2010. That was, yeah, the, that was when they, they repeated. 09 was when the Magic beat LeBron, and then oh, Kobe yeah, yeah, beat yeah. the Magic. Okay, okay. It was the next year that... Yeah, the next year we, the Celtics should have won. And Well, and I, I would never say they should have won. What I would have said... Oh, I liked, I, I'm going to say it. I always said... I always... No, I, it would have been nice to see whatever team was going to win that game, it, that it wouldn't be taking unguarded shots from the foul line. Just, you can't call ticky tack. I mean, the yeah. Celtics and Lakers are the NBA. That would have been nice. But, but you know, I don't, uh, you know. Did you watch the lottery? No, I didn't know what was happening. Dude, I was up in Saskatchewan. You're really. I was completely out of the loop. I had, no idea. I, I had no idea Giselle said something about Brady's concussions. and That stuff. wasn't great either. I didn't, I didn't hear anything about that. Um, that was tough because yeah, you know it's true. Yeah, but she's a model. You know what I mean? What's her idea of a concussion? She twists her ankle <laughs> on like the, you know, they always do that thing where they walk with the high heels and they start doing, it's like you're on a skateboard that's going 90 miles an hour, but they're just walking. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I think he's all right. The wives know everything because it's always like when you're, you know, your wife tells you something, hey, Mary told me this, but you can't tell her husband. You're always going to, it's always right. going to be it's, that it's circle. Gonna go around. Around. Yep. It's going to go wrong. So he around. must have told her. Yeah, that, yeah. Remember the Super Bowl when I hit my head in that Falcons game? I got a concussion. I didn't, she wouldn't I have made that know. up. Is my point. He's been doing it too long to be. I don't. I think to, these guys to, are to, like. I think football players and hockey players. They're just not, if they have a concussion and they feel like they can play, they're not telling the doctors some of the times. Especially in hockey, I know for maybe because he had a hockey. concussion, he didn't. That that thing that says, "Hey, don't tell your wife this." You wasn't was yeah it wasn't going. He forgot. He forgot to tell her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus, that's scary, man. Yeah. Well, what a time for a break. Let's talk about propertycloth.com. <laughs> Every guy knows that it's hard to find a dress shirt that fits. Maybe the collar is too tight. The sleeves are too long. The shirt's too loose. I have some good news. Maybe By the way, too much. everyone always says that you're the best at doing the reads of anyone. Yeah, because I would have said the maybe, maybe you ate too much. Quit blaming the clothes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Order a custom fit. Maybe you need to do some cardio. <laughs> custom fit shirt has never been easier thanks to proper cloth. <laughs> Create a custom shirt size in seconds by just answering 10 easy questions. No measuring required. Over 500 fabric styles to choose from. Everything from classic business to casual shirts. All high quality starting at just $85. When you go to Canada, what are you packing? Like two suitcases? You gotta bring the heavy jackets, right? It's cold. No, no. Well, this time of year, no. One I suitcase? Just, Are you carrying just, on? You trying no, to carry on the backpack? That's it. And if I didn't have to do my podcast when I was on the road, I would be just the one bad guy. Okay. Backpack. That's the pro. Uh, That's the pro. Proper cloth guarantees a perfect fit. Remakes are free. The proper cloth team makes it super easy to do. Stop wearing shirts that don't fit. Look your best. Go to propercloth.com/bs. Enter gift code BS to save twenty dollars on your first shirt. Again, propercloth.com/bs. Gift code BS. You've had the podcast even longer than I have. Ten years. I was May 2007, and I think you were like even earlier than that. I was all proud. I felt like I was like the first guy with the podcast. But no, you even you beat have. that. I, I think it was May 2007. I was about to we say. We were right around the same time. I think so. Well, I just did my 10th anniversary one whenever I said that my producer knew that it was a 10-year anniversary. I thought I started in July. He's like, no, it's May. Check it out. And he had the, like the first one that I did, which was like literally like 20 seconds long. What, just, were you just doing like riffing? No, I just, I didn't know what a podcast was. And this uh, comedian, Robert Kelly, uh, lived around the corner from me in New York. And he just said, you should do one. And I had a little flip phone. And you called, the f you called this number, and it recorded you on the phone. So my original, like, year and a half, two years was me on the phone, just walking through airports, ripping on fat With a people. flip phone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I had a flip phone back then. Yeah, I had a flip phone right up, because I, I had a head shot from it on a flip phone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, a tech, I'm not a technology guy. But now you're bringing equipment on the airplane. That's more than I yeah, did last no, week. But I it, forgot to bring mine. But it's like, it's literally, it's like a $90 mixer. Yeah. You know, plug a mic in. I don't have all the, I don't have theme music. Like my whole, <laughs> I got into this business to not have a job. Yeah. And I don't want to get involved in all these greens. There's two ways to do it. You can keep it. I'm doing the independent movie version of it. And then other people do like a superhero movie version of it where they get logos and drop cloths and studios and shit. And um, I'm like right dead center between those two worlds. Yeah, I don't know. You're pretty. This is pretty nice. It's pretty swank. But it's my office. <laughs> I just oh, have right. two microphones and a microphone stand. Oh, all right. Well, I thought this was just your podcast thing. I don't know. No, it's in my office. Studio lot. Going, yeah, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm in Hollywood on a lot. <laughs> You got to check in with the guard to get in it to do this podcast. This is like upper class stuff. All right. Maybe I don't it's know what, upper that, middle class. Uh, what that Larry Bird thing is, but I know you bought it because that is the worst Larry Bird. <laughs> no, what so is that? That doesn't a, even look like him. A and why friend of mine he gave it to me. He has the neck of a football player. Yeah, it's a it's a freezer activated. What does it say? Pup, puppet? Puppet cooler. A pu it's Double a puppet size cooler. It's a puppet Larry Bird cooler. puppet cooler. That is roided up Larry Bird. <laughs> It's like if he played baseball in the late 90s and was chasing. I'm going to put a Social picture of it McGuire. on Instagram so people know oh, what yeah, you're talking about. Oh, yeah, they got to see that. That is. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the great things about rooting for Larry Bird in the 80s was he was responsible for more ugly posters and ugly paraphernalia than any athlete of all time. Oh, I mean, there, there's like 30, like the worst t shirts, t shirts that were made yeah. his face look like a bird. Well, back then they used to have things where like the NBA, like their licensing and stuff. Like I just remember like. Like Stop and Shop would just hand out Celtics shirts right. after they won, and they yeah, would they just say Celtics it. NBA '84 NBA World yeah. Champions, and then it would say Stop and Shop. Their logo would be on the bottom, <laughs> and uh, they, that was long before you know before Fenway Park bought up bought up like all the, the all the blocks like around it. And right, I mean you can't even walk by the park unless you have a ticket on game day. You know, you, all, a Yaki Way and all those, they own everything there. You have to... I would love... I've never really read the right story to find out how they pulled that off. Because that well, was... Yeah, they pulled it off. They, well, I'm, they how many palms were greased? How, what they actually paid to do it? Um, there had to be South the two Park. holdouts. Did you see that, that South Park episode? Which one? When they had how Magic Johnson beat HIV, and they just had a blender, and he was just putting gold and cash in there, <laughs> and then it would come out as a drink, and he would drink it. <laughs> Well, I, there had to have been, there had to have been two people that were like, "Nah, I'm not selling. I'm not selling. No price is high enough." And at some point, they just broke those people down. You yeah, know? there's this famous story on um, it's on Highland in Hollywood, basically, where 
there's all this construction now. Like this part of Hollywood is really like buildings going up left and right. Yep. And these people wanted to put up this giant building. There was this hot dog burger stand that was pretty famous. Yeah, I remember that place. It- and the guy wouldn't sell. And they were like, here's two million. The guy's like, nope, three million, nope. But they really needed his territory because it was the last part for the building. And then all of a sudden the burger stand was gone. And we were always like, God, how much? Yeah, he what probably made like 10 million just for this burger stand. But but that's basically what the Red Sox did. They just bought out all the land and probably did some I strong love those arming. places, by the way. The little, the old school I love those stands. Places. Yeah. As long as there's not a line down the street. You know, once somebody on the Food Network comes by and like, this is the spot you got to go to. And then you right. can't go to it for like six years. Yeah. And you always can tell when they rerun the episode. <laughs> and when you show up like, ah, fuck, they rerun the episode. <laughs> I got to stay away for another six months. But I, yeah, I mean, I love those types. The LA but, truck scene's pretty big out here. But now there's like apps telling you where they are. But there's that, you can't discover anything anymore. There's, there's yeah, a whole science to everything. Yeah, and then it everybody can't just knows. just be the burger stand that's on this corner that nobody knows about. And it's a big whisker. Yep, everything's a boy band whisker now. Campaign. It just blows up and then implodes within like you, three years. <laughs> when you go back for Red Sox games, are you just blown away by how different it is? Because I'm always amazed. Like I still uh, can't get over the fact that people can sit on the monster. It's been like 12 years. Yeah. It's, and it's I, like I landing to, and, a, and then I was also, when they put the Coke bottles up there, they took them down. But when they had it up there and they started writing all over the wall... But now when I look back to what it looked like when I was a kid, it's like, wow, that was a real kind of plain Jane looking field. It really was. Because if you look at like Ebbets Field and all those, like the, the whole outfield wall was, was billboards. Yeah. So I, I, like, I like all the stuff that they've done to it. I don't like that you can't walk around the park. You know, all of a sudden like a public street closes before the game. That's a little like military police to me. But um, Wait, let's talk, uh, let's talk hockey because I had some okay. bad questions I wanted to okay. go through with you. But, uh, that was an abrupt change. You're like, I am I know bored why. with I want, this. I'm on a schedule. I'm on a schedule. <laughs> huh? hey, I, hey, I respect it. In, I, I, re- I respect your schedule. So Successful people all have a schedule. And they, they adhere to it. <laughs> that felt like a compliment and an insult. <laughs> no, my wife tweeted something to me. Since I, I, I don't know, sent a link. I don't know how the fuck you say it. But it was just like the top 20 things that uh, super rich people do. And uh, the one that I related to the most is they don't take meetings unless there's an offer on the table because it's just a time sponge. And I was just like, I started to understand why they have drivers because you can just get so much done in. They're like, oh, rich people understand that there's 1,440 minutes in a day. They try to, oh, you know, they get. Like, That's hilarious. I know. It's like, do they know that? Do they break it down to that level? Like, who wants to hang out with that guy? Well, anyone who's ever moved out here has this stage when people are asking you to go to lunch or meetings or whatever. Hey, and it takes like about nine months to realize that it's a complete waste of time and totally yeah, stupid they just, to do it. Yeah. Hey, we'll go. Yeah, we're, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, let's yeah, keep talking. Such a big fan. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Try the sandwich, oh, and then nothing okay. comes of it. Nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. talk. Call you a couple. Of Bunch of empty calories. You're mm. going home bloated. You just keep getting fatter, and then no one wants to book you. Ah, oh, he's like him. He got fat. He took too many meetings. So hockey playoffs. We had a final four of Pittsburgh, Ottawa, who was like brought back the the corpse of the '95 Devils and kicked it around a couple of times. It just brought that whole style back. Nashville. You don't think Anderson's a big part of that? Their goaltender has been crazy. And he's been good. And Anaheim. Are they dropping three on the blue line? I didn't notice that. I just couldn't understand why. There's a lot of clutter and clogging. Uh, And then Nashville and Anaheim. And it's like you can't get less star-studded than that other than Pittsburgh. For like the the casual fans just look at that and go, eh. I'm out. Hey, you know what? They needed Edmonton. Fuck the casual that's, fan. Because I'm setting you up for the fuck the casual fuck fans. The casual right. Here fan. we go. If you can't get into the conference finals, there you go. you're not a casual fan. You're just not a fan. And I'm so sick of people that aren't hockey fans telling them how to fix the game. Just leave it alone. Nashville is one of the great stories. Their fans are insane. They went from not knowing shit about hockey <laughs> to having some of the greatest chance. They stole a lot. You know, it's all your fault. It's all, I mean, I've seen yeah. that on college games. But like... You're sitting there listening. Uh, for half a second, it sounded like a soccer game, you know, where they're singing songs and shit. And uh, Section 303, they're getting all this, all these write-ups and stuff, and it's just a great environment. And then I was just talking about this. Uh, as a Boston fan, I love that the Canadians traded 
P.K. Subban for whoever the hell they got, and now this guy can win a cup. To me, that's it's going to be the Patrick Waugh thing all over again. We had so him it'll on... just be something that I can tease him about. Yeah, because they have way more cups than we're ever going to. I mean, we need like and they with thirty teams decades. now. Then the only way yeah. to catch them is I don't know. You'd have to play for another two centuries. Then you have to suck for two hundred years. He came on my pod in February, I think. What was it February? March. March. Sat on that couch, and at that point, they were doing fine they weren't yeah, like they were right. running away with it or anything and uh we were like what so what do you think do you think you can win and he was like absolutely i really like but he the way he said it i was kind of like ah should i put some down on this he seemed pretty yeah. confident gold he did seem again. confident Pecorine has been playing crazy and uh so you're more pro batman than i am i hate the fact that they expanded to places like phoenix and all these stupid oh, places but nashville is the big success story yes well look nashville is like a real market that they've created out of thin air smashville is what they call it. they got a it's, nickname they it's got a everything. huge part of the city they had uh they did a nice job with those star spangled banners they had all these different celebrities people are wondering like if they you know game three of the cup what celebrity would come in and yeah that's that's good that's Kelly all Clarkson it's a bonus yeah well if the other cities wouldn't if they embraced hockey it's all about the environment you go down there it's like you, you always got to give like a, an ex- expansion team a little bit of time for it to see if it gels with the city but it was the combination of going south and then teams leaving canada and it was the thing that i always thought which was great about hockey was i liked all the weirdness i loved the two national anthems yeah i love too three 20 minute periods the I fact it. that winnipeg and edmonton had teams yeah was just insane these little two tiny cities yeah, calgary and i i liked uh and then all back then too all the teams were so smashed in together yeah it was like you could knock out if you wanted to you know go see all the baseball parks if you wanted to go to all the hockey arenas if you just went like you could have saw quebec nordiques canadians buffalo hartford boston Detroit. Long Island Rangers. I'm just going on the East Coast. Yeah, just driving. Uh, True. The Devils, uh, the Flyers, and uh, the Capitals and uh, Penguins. I mean, that's half the league was just all jammed up there in the Adams and the Patricks division, and yeah. they hated each other. And you could whoever whatever game they had was like a three hour four hour drive in your car if you wanted to, if you were that much of a lunatic. But I think now because of um, that, that that got into favor with uh, with the 24 hour sports networks and that, and all these behind the scenes things you could really learn about these other teams rather than sports just being five minutes at the end of a newscast like um, like one of the things that made me go to all the ballparks was watching this week in baseball like every Saturday with Mel Allen I would see all these ballparks yeah. and I just thought like the fountains in Kansas City were cool I liked the King Dome I thought AstroTurf was the shit you know when I was in the 70s for some reason I, I didn't realize how much it was hurting the players but um, once like ESPN and all that came out simpler times yeah and you just learned about all these places and I don't know what happened like only an airline travel went through the roof now I guess everybody does it but back then of all the sports you could go see half the league in your car like the NHL was it I watched Bad News Bears and Breaking Training with my uh, with my son over the weekend which is the second one the sequel when they drive to Astrodome in a, in a stolen van one. Yeah, and uh, you know some really. And the last vintage. one was in Japan, right? Yeah, they, we don't talk about that one. It's, 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 a, it's a two. It's a two movie franchise. <laughs> Japan never happened. But uh, but the Astrodome, it's vintage Astrodome, and you know the bull blowing out the smoke, and you know, and my yeah. son was watching. He's like, Dad, this stadium's so stupid. And I was like, this is 40 years ago. This is it. This is yeah. all we had. This was the coolest stadium. I love those teams. You forget how, old, how far, how many years Jose ago that Cruz, was. Jose Cruz, J.R. Richards. Oh, yeah. Well, Bob Watson has a cameo in it. Oh, he does? He starts to, he, to let them play. He starts it at the end with little tanners. Around. I went to a game there. Yeah. I went to the Astrodome. That, I did, too. I've gone to a bunch of that that are no longer there anymore. Yeah, those those old concrete domes are basically gone. Did you ever go to County Stadium? Milwaukee I Brewers? have, actually. Yeah, that was an interesting one too. I like that one. I think I went, I went in both. I went with the old one, and then the new one. The old one had the guy that slid down the slide. And in the seventies, the, though, the it was a big boobed woman. A guy would hit a home run, and then some, you know, big boobed woman would slide down a slide into a keg of beer. It was supposed to be a keg of beer, and it was just—it was like the, the Ron Burgundy years in the uh, 
That sounds like major an F is for family plot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's been so much fun with the F is for family is like just the people in the rise room will remember stuff like that. We'll be like, yeah. They didn't do that. Like, look it up. Look at that. YouTube, you put it on. And then we'll laugh. And then it's just like, all right, we got to do something like that. And we'll just, we'll just, you know, I mean, you can knock just, it up a little bit. You could just mine old Three's Companies episodes and get 28 oh, different. Oh, I loved Larry in, upstairs. I mean, that guy in, was just like. Plats. Just banging every night. He was like 50. Just didn't care. All hairy and stuff. That guy was hilarious. <laughs> uh, the hockey thing, though. Didn't you feel like they kind of needed Edmonton in there? I mean, I know, whatever, it's conference finals. It's fun anyway. But no, I just was, I, I I think, was enjoying the McDavid experience. Yes, but I also think no matter what happens, people are going to complain. There's that just, somebody's not in there? In this yeah. country. Because there's too many people who don't watch it. So there's always going to be, like, the, the easiest thing... The best thing, I think, for the NHL a lot of times, aside from a, a teams that have big stars, is two original six teams. Yeah. Because anybody who doesn't even know anything about hockey, it's easy for them to jump on the bandwagon, you know? Right. Well, they last met in 1958, one of the original 68. Like, they'll, they'll be able to talk about it. But, you know, when it's Anaheim, Nashville, and uh, Ottawa are in there, that's work. Then you have to do your job, you know? Anaheim so, was not work, though, for me anyway, because I can't stand Anaheim. And they have yeah, a lot of people. Don't if like you them. can't get behind hating Perry, then I don't my know whole thing is I could just never get past laugh. that it was Disney owned and they actually were called the Mighty Ducks. It's amazing, and that they now just go by the Ducks and they're trying to have a tougher looking uniform. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, you're the Mighty Ducks. You guys are mighty. <laughs> you are the Emilio Estevez. <laughs> so you're in on Nashville. Whatever happens, that sounds like you're on the bandwagon. Um, yeah, I actually like. Uh, I, I agree with your Canadians' logic. It's pre- it would be pretty funny if that trade ended up winning Nashville. Oh, the just cup. because their ownership, they're is gonna the amount of complaining that they're gonna have to listen to from their fan base if that actually happens um, will be enjoyable. But uh, I am st- as much as it's surprising that Nashville's made the finals. Uh, what Ottawa is doing is. Crazy. I mean, Anderson, as much as you're saying, I guess they're, they're playing like, what, a lock or a trap defense? I, I don't watch it at that level, but I just know Anderson's just, their goaltender's been playing unbelievable. And uh, they're Dave Grohl looking defenseman. Every good defenseman looks like Dave Grohl in the <laughs> NHL. You got your guy on, uh, on, on the Kings. I'm so oh, bad Dowdy? with names. Yeah, Dowdy looks, yeah. Never seen Dave Grohl in a game either, so I don't know. I think when he's not doing a Foo Fighters album. Quick break to talk about Hotel Tonight. If you're like me and you're not so great at planning ahead, I've got some good news for you. There's an awesome app called Hotel Tonight that helps you find amazing hotel deals at the last minute. Unlike flights, hotel rates usually get cheaper at the last minute. Hotel Tonight helps hotels sell their unsold rooms, allowing them to pass those deals along to you. Not for last resort places, but cool, top-rated hotels. Hotel Tonight has over 15,000 awesome partner hotels in 36 countries, perfect for a spontaneous getaway or a trip you've wanted for a while. Like if your favorite sports team, say, made the NBA Finals. I'm talking to you, Cleveland, San Francisco, slash Oakland. Even though the app's name is Hotel Tonight, you can book up to a week in advance. All it takes is 10 seconds, just three taps, and a swipe. Get in on these killer Last minute deals. Download the Hotel Tonight app right now. Back to Bill Burr. Hey, uh, Mark from Madison in Wisconsin said, I've noticed that in your podcast, you will do sponsor advertisement live reads with most of your guests. However, you'll usually do pre recorded commercials for your more, let's say, distinguished guests, which isn't technically true because sometimes we're on location and you can't do the ads. Right. Uh, would you ever, like, you wouldn't do certain commercials with Barack Obama or Bill Belichick staring at you? My question, what would be the most famous, important, distinguished guest you would feel comfortable doing a live read in front of? Oh, this is what it really is. So who do, who's the answer for you? Is there a level? No, he has a misinterpretation. Is, is if I have another comic in there? Yeah. And we're doing it, then I'm just going to read him live. If I actually have, like, somebody who's more like an actor or something like that, and, you know, I, I just feel like they're not going to riff along with this and it's going to bore them. I just look at it more like it's going to bore them that I'm going to sit there and, you know. Have you ever had a sponsor get mad because you made oh, yeah. the joke? I've lost a bunch of them. You, you, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. You've lost sponsors? Yeah, but I never did it to make money. So it's just, it's all free. It's all silly. It's, it's monopoly money. So 
<laughs> the thing is, I never talk to any of them either. Like when they yeah. want to complain, it's I am never available. <laughs> Did you not like it? Do you want your money back? Fine. <laughs> Fine, but I don't I'm not getting on the fucking phone with you. This is how I'm gonna do it. And if you had half a brain, you'd realize that the way I read it makes people listen. I just knew the show doesn't stop. You keep it has to keep being entertaining. So I mean, I don't say that I I I guess I've said that a few times that the product was stupid. Uh, the the, the most, most infamous one was uh, Nature Box, which I somehow, with my borderline dyslexia, read as nat Nature's Box, like possessive. <laughs> and I was like, they're going down on Mother Nature. And I just started reading this stupid thing. It's like, it was just such a service you didn't need. It's like, you don't need these fucking guys. What are you, two years old? Just eat a banana. Have a salad. You know what you got to do. This is fucking stupid. And then they got all mad. <laughs> thinking that we cared like you know what we're gonna do what are you gonna do we're gonna take the advertising like all right see you later <laughs> but they sh this is the thing about them is if is if they stayed on and they let me say every week some version of you're going down on mother nature people would love it it becomes like a hit song they want to hear it and then people are also lazy they know like, yeah just bring me the food i don't have time to go get bananas and they would have sold because I do that MeUndies thing. MeUndies, MeUndies, no more sweaty balls. And every time I do it, it's, it's more <laughs> and more filthy. And they love it. And people buy the fucking underwear. I did a MeUndies last week. I was talking about how they have these certain boxers where they're just like these loose boxers. Uh -huh. And I like them. I mean, they're, they're my favorite ones. And I said how they let the boys, I like to let the boys roam the ranch. And then Tate afterwards like, do you want to keep that? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. let's keep yeah, it. No, yeah, they, the well, that, well that's what they want. They want you to know that you're using the product. So the NBA awards are coming on TNT on June 26th. Show will be hosted by Drake, and we'll get to find out the awards for MVP, Rookie of the Year, all that stuff, as well as awards voted by fans for things. It's going like to be hosted by Drake. Best dunk and best performance hosted by why, Drake. Why? Why is it hosted by Drake? Yeah, why not like Dr. J or, or basketball? I, I, they're trying see, to. They, oh, everything's about getting all these different. Every yeah. Uh, every all these different people to watch right yeah then Dra get, if drake's hosting maybe somebody who who's into drake but doesn't watch basketball will then watch then and be like oh hey drake's maybe i'll give basketball a chance <laughs> if, I'll give a if, if drake's watching it if, if drake it. i think drake is cool then maybe this is cool to watch so but he does have like season tickets he always goes to the i Toronto think he's game, actually a legit fan i had him when we when i was doing countdown he came on and he was able to have a basketball conversation with us i was impressed I'm he does go to Toronto games because uh, how busy that guy is. You wouldn't yeah. think he'd have time to keep up on stuff. True, although I think they're you... always calling him on his cell phone. Well, you used to, you used to. <laughs> My wife listens to all that shit. Like, I, I have no idea what any of that stuff is. He's upset is, a lot. When you become that famous, I think you spend more time alone than people realize. Because where are you going to go? You're not going to go like to. Oh, I'm going to take a walk down on Melrose. Like, he's going to get mobbed. So he's, like, stuck in his hotel suite half the time. So he probably Can't is watching basketball. Can't you just walk basketball. down the street? Oh, my God, you're Drake. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going for a walk, man. You just can't do that? No. You definitely can't. Well, definitely what do you... Can't. Okay, so just put yourself in the place of the other person. What are you doing? It's like, yeah, he. I asked him and he confirmed it. I mean, it's the, it's the end. I think it's more like you, he's walking and people are like, Drake, Drake, can I get a picture? And then you have to stop. You take an iPhone picture and the next guy wants one. And then he's no, on the corner of Melrose have, for an hour. You have the headphones on. That's LeBron's move. You have the headphones on. I think on. LeBron just walks around with headphones 24 hours a day. So the NBA awards on TNT. <laughs> uh, That's fucking hilarious. I, uh, I've always wanted an award called the McKeskey, which I have not done yet for the league's best white player named oh, okay. after Paul McKeskey and I think this year the winner is Gordon Hayward all right well I don't even know who any of those people are Gordon Hayward. <laughs> you remember Paul McKeskey on the Bucks 30 years ago he had the afro perm big center on the Bucks goofy center Celtics played the Bucks that year was the Sydney Moncrief guy era? that year yeah, yeah yeah I was always trying to remember who I always get them because they always the had a bunch like of a white Jack centers. Jack Sigma was was Seattle. They had three white centers at the same time: Jack Sigma, Randy Brewer, and Paul McKeskey. McKeskey had this like perm, <laughs> and you just watched him and you went, "How is this guy in the league?" Because he's so seven I named feet him the tall. McKeskey. Yeah, 
Cause so anyway, I have Gordon Hayward as my McKeskey winner this year. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to go through a couple. I'm going to throw a couple emails Do you, you. What about like uh, the white guy out of nowhere for one game award? That's got to be Kelly Olynyk. Well, that's now the Kelly Olynyk. The Kelly Olynyk. I, I mean, went that to was, that game. That was like a movie. What was that Robbie Benson movie? You know, it was one guy, on one with Robbie yeah, Benson. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, the guy. We oh, your hot dog. You can stick it up your ass with a red hot poker. <laughs> Hear me? A red hot poker. <laughs> and he goes up, and just lights him up. He was on fire. They were chanting his name in the garden. It was like a fucking Disney movie. I couldn't believe it. He just kept hitting him. And I was just like, I just did a 180. I was like, this guy is a fucking animal. (laughs) I was off the couch. Kelly Olenek had me off the couch after being on the wrong side of the poster. For the t- I got back on the NBA a year and a half ago and a buddy of mine, Nick fan, came to town. And so I ordered the NBA package to be, yeah, because I'm a good host, right? And I just yeah. started watching the Celtics and they were fun to watch. And I was just like, who the fuck is this guy? He looks like he's in a jam band. Like, what is, what's <laughs> going on with this guy? Is he a bass player? <laughs> just got this guy out there, like waiting for, you know, like a joint behind his ear or something. And um, I just want, I just so wish the Celtics could somehow get to a game seven with the Cavaliers, because I need to know. One more Olympic game? I need to know if that was a fluke. No, it was a or fluke. If, if it was 1,000% a if fluke. He's got that thing where he. I have your answer already. It was a fluke. Nah. I went to that game. People leaving, it was a combination of euphoric and everybody just laughing. Yeah. It was it's like, just, Kelly Olenek, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> ah. So just everybody had the same reaction to They couldn't believe it. I, but I wasn't sure if it was a little Eli Manning. Well, I feel Eli Manning is bored the first six to seven weeks of the season. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, Eli, I don't know if you're looking at the sta- uh, standings, but you have to win like eight of the last nine. And then he just goes, oh, all right. Now, and then he just still he just, has like, that same in. look on his face, but he just gets <laughs> dialed in. Like, he's one, it's like some guys, if it's, if it's just a who gives a shit game, they, that's their attitude. I don't know. Um, what do I know? I tell do you have jokes. a LeVar Ball? Huh? Point of view, because I had Mike from Boston ask, "Is Levar Ball's, is Levar Ball become the sports version of Donald Trump? He's the Lonzo Ball dad who keeps getting in." Uh, oh, that guy's hilarious. See, I think he's hilarious. Oh my too. god, the way he said, he goes, "I got a son. He's good. The next guy's even better." And the third ones, he goes, "He goes, I make sons like the way they make cell phones." He goes, "Each one keeps getting better." I'm like, that's like some of the greatest shit talk I've heard in a long time. I love it, dude. And he's old enough. To just be saying crazy shit. And, you know, if people want to stick a microphone in his face, I love how his kids handle it going like, yeah, you know, dad says crazy shit. <laughs> right. I'm just out here trying to play. And um, no, there's fun. Like Venus and Serena's dad's fun. I love those dads like that. They they know the game. They talk shit. And I'm, not, I'm not positive Venus and Serena's dad. I think he was fun initially. I'm not sure it ended as fun. I think he went a little went a little loopy. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't totally remember that story. I'd have to research it. So you just threw that out there? Well, I just... <laughs> I was trying to have fun here. No, I like... I like... I don't know that it did, but I don't remember how it ended. But I'm just going to say that. No, I love... Uh, I love people like that. Like, I, they just remind me of comedians that don't give a shit. And when you watch them, you know yeah. that, that they don't care who's in the room and they're going to say what they want to say. And... To me, that's kind of what stand, stand up is. Go up there and say what you think is funny. Don't go up there and be like, well, I want to say this, but if I say that, I'm worried the crowd's going to think that. Then you just dropped everything down like 60% as far, at least for me. This is me selfishly right. as a comedian. It's like, I want to see you go up there and just the shit that you think by yourself. I want to hear it. Right. Yeah, It's interesting. It's interesting how people look at stuff. So, um, ESPN put him on first take with Stephen A., and it was good television and also uh, illuminated how dumb those shows are. Because oh. they had this one crazy, crazy dad comes on. He's just firing back and forth with Stephen A. It was good natured. Yep. But it's I like, love yeah. Stephen A. Smith, too. Stephen A. Smith, after the game seven, when he was standing on the court, you know that look he has on his face with his eyebrows are yeah. down where he's waiting to talk? It always cracks me up because he looks like a little, like a school kid who's had enough. He's worried to sucker punch somebody. And <laughs> I don't know what it is about him. But he was sitting there, and they go, they were going, Stephen A. Smith, there's actually a Linux lit everything up. They go, yeah. in all of your Game 7 scenarios, was there anything in there that said Kelly O'Linick was going to take this game over? And they went to him, he just goes, nothing, not a thing. And he just went <laughs> off on how insane it was. But he was talking about 
the way he was talking about Kelly Olynyk was 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 awesome and uh, like that guy like if he didn't do what he did he could he could promote wrestlers he could just like he is such a a great like hype man like when he gets into something it's or, all if, energy. or if it's terrible the way he trashes him has always made well, me. Have you ever heard? Have you ever well, heard this his was radio absolutely show? Disgusting, and just the way, <laughs> the way I, he always makes me laugh. His radio show, which is on, you can get on Sirius out here. I think like uh, I don't know, like ten o'clock range. But uh-huh. he's just by himself, just making himself get madder and madder about certain things. Oh, that sounds like and my podcast. He's, he's I want to listen. <laughs> yeah, you like it? <laughs> he had this great one when. Uh, I don't know if I told this story in the podcast before, but it was right at when the Bulls were like self combusting. Right. And this young guy in the Bulls, Jerry and Grant, had some comment. And Stephen A was really upset that this guy weighed in because it was between Wade and Butler and those guys. And he's like, Guess what, Jer- Jeremy Grant? Is it Jeremy or Jer- Jerry? Jerry. Jerry. Guess what, Jerry and Grant? Nobody's talking to you, okay? <laughs> we don't care what you think, okay? <laughs> it, just, it just started berating him. <laughs> Like, like he was in the room. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, come on, that's that's but entertaining. He knows what he's doing, and I think for a while it's things swung against him with ESPN, and then you could once you know noise well, started they, to when, matter. When they fired those hundred people, people were saying like you should have made Stephen A. Smith one of them, and then he played the race card. It was hilarious. He's like, "There's plenty of the loud white guys out there. You don't go after them." I was fucking crying. <laughs> It's fucking hilarious. That guy is fucking hilarious and always needs to be on TV. <laughs> well, I mean, he's on all the time. I mean, they, when people complain about him, it's like there's a reason that they're using him all the time. Like they study this stuff. Yeah, they, he knows they what he's focus doing. Groups. But you know what? You, he's I know provoking. what I'm doing. I know. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. When I I know that when I do something, that the people who are into me are laughing, and half the reason they're laughing is because they want to hear the response from the people that don't want to hear it. So and it is shtick because I had him on my podcast that. Uh, <laughs> When I was at Grantland, and you know, we were in this little room, it's just me and him, and he unsticked, and it was like, oh, there's. Yeah, but like you a also play in the room, hang. but it's also like, you also have to entertain. Like people say, like, you know, when you do that guy we see on stage, I, are you like that 24 7? It's like, would you want to be around that? Right. Some screaming and yelling idiot. Like, I just, just, I'm doing a show, I'm trying to entertain people. So I, I act stuff out and I do all that, but then afterwards, I mean, I just go to a dive bar and I chill out. I'm not going to sit there being like, you know, what's up with these peanuts? <laughs> <laughs> Yelling at people. I think people think like Seinfeld is like that, that if you run into him, he's just going to be like, so what's the deal with socks? And just goes into uh, that. But no. that's the thing. It's you're not, there's no way to no, be like that all the time. Uh, You'd lose your mind. Yeah, no, no, no. Anyone that who's guy, like, that, like the way they are on TV or in stand up or whatever all the time. Yeah, it's called being on off stage. It would be, an, you'd be a it's maniac. Exhausting. It's yeah. exhausting to be around. No one wants to be around that. That was always the problem. They always said that was the problem with like Chris Farley and Belushi and some of the guys who had ended up having drug issues with SNL was when they weren't on SNL, they were trying to be the life of the party all the time. And it's like yeah, you just can't sustain know, yeah. that. Who knows why you would do that? But I, I think it's also like uh, I think it's a, I think it's also like a, a need to be liked and want to uh, not let people down. So you feel like you have to do stuff. Like right. you're, you're kind of putting other people before your own um best self-interest but like there's a bunch of people from that whole era that just say chris farley was the funniest guy ever i've heard chris rock say that bob odenkirk just everybody was like that dude was like would hurt you he was so funny it Um, seems like it would say almost unanimous everybody agrees on that yeah because there's different types of funny like there's the conventional yeah i know 20 years ago the guy who's like the combo of physical, I can't believe he's doing that funny. Is usually beats all the other funny. Like they would say he would like try to take a shit out the window on the thirtieth floor and just like fucking but crazy his, stuff. His his my thing was his intensity. Yeah, and his also his, his phys, physicality, like the like the way the guy moved. Man, he was like he was really fast. Yeah, and like I remember him sitting down one time doing like a talk show, and he sat down, he told a joke, and then he kind of he snapped his head to the left and snapped to the right, and his hair like changed parts on top of his head the way he did it, <laughs> and it was just like, even like when he would get really small, like when he was doing the guy who lived down by the river, the van down by the river, like he would get really small, and then like he knew how to, he knew how to unleash it, right, and then put and like recoil it and pull it back, but he was just so like. Uh, 
so intense and seemed like a really sweet guy too. Like they were talking about he was maybe going to do some dramatic stuff. I bet he would have he would have killed that. Um, you never got to see Kinnison, did you? Never saw him live. No. They always said in person he was the force of nature aspect of it was pretty great. Yeah, I mean, I can't I can't imagine seeing that. That was those were like. Uh, he died like right as I started. Yeah. I think he died in like nine, 93 maybe. I was started in 92. But he was um he was a big one for me to watch just cuz I remember when he was in that young comedian special seeing that for the first time and it was like it was like a UFO had landed. Oh yeah, his his the, first the, the, letterman, that. his first letterman were Dave is going like, all right, guys, I don't know about... Like, they always sort of act like somebody's danger. You really felt it. Like, we really don't know what the hell this guy's going to do. And, yeah. and he came out and he went up into the crowd. I mean, the balls that that takes. Like, what if this doesn't work? What if I walk all the way into the crowd, this bombs, and then I have to do that long journey back out in Whoops. front of the cameras? I mean, that would have been, like, legendary, like, bomb, but it, it, it somehow worked. And what was your first late night show that you did? Uh, I did Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien was the first one I did. The first was it the whole thing? You had like your best four minutes or did you not even overthink it like that? Oh, you know, absolutely. Well, the best four clean minutes that weren't going to offend people and it would have me back and I'd get the job done. Um, that's kind of what the first one's about. It's just like, I just want to get out there, you know, and I actually, by the end, I mean, it took me a number of them to, to figure out how to do late night. Rich Little was the guy I learned how to do it from. Because uh, Dave Letterman, you know, one of his final years, had these old school guys come on. Yeah. And he came out, and like I used to always come out like, okay, I'm at a comedy club. I got to get these people, and then you know, you know, really give them the energy, and blah 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 blah. And it looks unprofessional on TV. You need to come out there like relaxed, and what you really are doing is you're hosting the show. It's a weird thing. Oh, that's and I, interesting. And I, yeah, because I noticed when he came out, he was just like, you know, I've been doing this for a number of years. And over the years, one of my favorite jokes that I ever got to tell, I'm like, to me already, I'd be in panic mode. Like, holy shit. Dude. <laughs> you just went like, you going on like 10 12 seconds. 12 seconds, yeah. Yeah, without, and they just settled in. Like, oh, tell us the story. Bam, hits him. Waits for the laughs. And then, of course, you know, with this guy, and I was just like, oh, that's what you do. So the next time I went out, I was like, all right, this is how you do it. And I just, you know, the most energy I would do, I would just sort of lean in when I did the joke. And then when they laughed, I just would step back. And then when I told it to set up, I'd get to the middle. I was doing this little two-step. And it was just like, oh, my God, I was exerting all of this energy. And all I had to do was just sort of stand there. Because I noticed you can move forward and backwards. But if you move side to side and the camera has to move, that's, it's fucking weird for whatever reason. If you're watching a stand-up special, that's fine. But I just found out on late night because nobody's done that movement yet. Yeah. And then also, they're going to move like that. And all of a sudden, you start to see that, oh, the band's right there. There's Dave's desk. You want to stay, like, right in the alley. Of course, I learned all of this. And then I, only, I did it one more, one more time. And then that was the end of it. But uh, I finally figured out how to do it. Well, Watch. now when you do them, you're just, you're, like, on the couch, right? Yeah. Which is then... Because that's its own different skill set. Yes, and what that skill set is is here's what we're gonna talk about, and then, and that ends after about thirty seconds, and then you're just riffing on something, and then the person will go back to it a little bit or or, or whatever. So that's a. Uh, it seems that, like Conan's that, the one that you, I guess, you're the most comfortable with. You've done that one the most times. He gave me the the shot to start doing it. And yeah, they, he's the reason why I can do it on the other shows. But like Conan's and and Andy are like old school. Where yeah, if you're if you're doing well, they just let you go and they're laughing and everything. But if you if you start to, you know, stutter or whatever and falter, Conan will go back to the card. Or Andy's great with Andy saved me so many times on that yeah. show. Um, because it seems like when you go on those, your goal is to make Conan either laugh or be uncomfortable. Like you're, I know that's neither. That's not true. I mean, I, I want to make the crowd laugh. I want to go out there and like, it's more of a sound. Oh, that's interesting. So you're, it's a sound. Okay. You have in your head what killing sounds like. So I'm trying to get that sound in the room really is what it really is. It's not like I'm not going out there like, you know, I'm going to make them laugh. Now I'm going to make them uncomfortable. And it, it isn't. It's just more like I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk. And I'm trying, gonna, trying to think as little as possible 
so you can get into the Kelly Olynyk Game 7 zone <laughs> where no matter what you throw up, it's going to go through the hoop. So they're chanting your name in the end. Yeah, that's basically it. And it's like... But there's a couple different sounds though, right? Like sometimes the uncomfortable sound is a good sound too. Yeah, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Last night I had an uncomfortable one that didn't come off the way I would have liked it to. And uh, I seem to have survived it. You want to tell the story or not? I'm not really. I mean, it was okay. just one of those stupid, like... Bad joke and it just no, died? No, those upfront things where you're going uh. on in front of these Emmy people. And the subject of, like, Trump came up. And, of course, everybody's here is like, oh, my God, he's like the worst thing ever, you know? Doing that red ties are bad, blue ties are good, rather than seeing the common thread. So I tried to see the common thread and everybody, oh, I guess we know who he voted for. It's like, no, you oh, don't. No. no, you don't. I didn't vote for any of them. And they all went, oh, like I, I, like I was the one who gave it away. It's like, Hillary still won the state, you assholes. I mean, what are you talking about? And it was just one of those things where anybody wearing red is just horrific. Like so, somebody on there was talking about how they, they were watching CNN at home and then they watched it driving to work. And by the time they got to work, it's like, you got to turn this on, blah, 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 blah. And I wanted to be like, well, maybe you should have watched the little Fox News, too, which just sort of leveled out the lies so you wouldn't be like, <laughs> it's like, why are you watching either one of those? Dude, when, when Trump won, there was, a, there was that, the woman there with the Mary Lou Retton haircut, she, like, cried. It's like, that's not news. At that, like, you're not supposed to cry. Like, when you watch CNN and you watch Fox, you know who they voted for. So you're no longer, you're not watching, like, unbiased shit i just love how they try to act they actually say that on fox fair and unbiased like both of those channels are two of the funniest channels if what they were talking about wasn't actually happening it would be like like you know gut bustingly funny but it's just funny to watch them act you know that that i'm reporting look on their face it's like these are op-ed pieces it's the equivalent of uh like if you watch nba league pass and they have the home team announcers Oh, yes. And the home team announcers always think they're getting a job by the refs. Oh, totally. Tommy Heinsohn, the the refs have never, ever been on the Uh, Celtic side in any game that's ever happened. But then you go to San Antonio and Sean Elliott's having a stroke every time there's a call against the Spurs. I love the homers. It's the way it is. Oh, well, you know, once again. Who's the guy? Once again, another call by him. Tommy's freaking out. I love Heinsohn. The little guy. (laughs) What? Who's, who's, I always figure his name. Who's the guy he does the the play by play with? uh... Tommy Heinsohn? Yeah, Tommy. Mike Gorman. Oh They've my been God. partners for like 37 years. When he talked about, uh, we, were, we had some road game. We were just getting screwed on everyone. And he, and he had a great one because Heinsohn was screaming and yelling. Yeah. And Mike just was sort of like low key. He goes, he goes this reminds me of, uh, you know, when you'd have an away game uh, with a rival and, a, and, the, and the referees were made up of faculty members for the other school. <laughs> I just love the word faculty. <laughs> I, I can't get their feed though when when during the playoffs like I yeah sometimes they don't do the games sometimes uh, it's like somebody the was national saying game. like I've Shaq was saying how Tommy Heinsohn was going crazy when Kelly Olynyk like I have to find the there's got to be audio of him somebody must have put a clip together of him absolutely of Kelly of of Heinsohn reacting to Kelly Olynyk oh my god taking over that game I mean they, that's like I'm telling you that's a game like I don't know. We were saying like, it when we were like leaving. If they would we were somehow like, win the championship, like that would be like that'd be the Bernie Carbo home run, <laughs> right? Of uh, of Celtics lore. All of us knew it as it was happening, like in the in the thing, like leaving, going. That was the Olympic game. We just saw the Olympic game because the odds of it ever happening again, and also like I was so happy for him. We were walking out. We were walking by all the wizards, like the owner and people like that, and they were just like shell shocked. And I was like, imagine you lose Game Seven because Kelly Olynyk got hot. That's what oh. sent you home. You're just sitting there in some, like the owner's probably like in Nantucket or somewhere in mid July, like just having a margarita at five, and he's just starts thinking about <laughs> Kelly Olynyk. It's pissed off. Oh. That's that. Yeah, that was that's a uh, what that's a way a to long, go. Long bitter off season for those guys, but I like that team, the Wizards. Man, I like I like. Yeah, I think we'll be seeing them again. Yeah, and they, I think they're uh, gonna be uh, they're gonna be back for seconds. Do these Celtics good. have like a strict like no explosive power clause with whoever they seem to draft? It's just why is everybody always jumping out of the gym over us? We got I mean, obviously Isaiah Thomas is lightning quick, but we always just seem to we either have like brute force or just like Kelly Olynyk. I don't understand. What do we have against somebody? We got Green though. Green can get up, right? 
There's some this of the guy, young kids. Like, uh, um, if they trade back in the draft, there's this kid, Jonathan Isaac, who's like this six eleven jumper over the rim guy, the kind of guy the Celtics never have ever. And it would, it would be fun to just watch that guy in the Celtics once. Jalen Brown might be a little bit like that, but he's only six eight. Yeah, you're right. It's always like even during the KG era, there was never that. You know, the guys off the bench was like big baby. Yeah, he's no, we just six foot five and we can always jump had that one we're inch. Never gonna quit. Yeah, you you can't wear us down. We're just gonna keep coming. We're like Jason on Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Man, how fast you run? We're just walking through the woods. You're gonna trip over a branch, and we're gonna go over on a run. <laughs> but we've just never been like uh, like when I was watching the Wizards. I was just like all of these guys. Like they got that quick first step, yeah. explosive thing. And uh, oh, you know. know what? We never talked about the Pats winning the Super Bowl and coming back from twenty eight to three. Oh yeah, how nuts was that? Twenty yeah, twenty eight to three. I, it was twenty eight to three. I there wasn't the a lot of weirdest, time left either. That was the weirdest. Super Bowl, as far as like when it started, I was nervous and they were so kicking our ass. It was just over. And so I was just sitting there waiting for the inevitable. And as we started to come back, you know, 28 to 10, I'm like, all right, maybe they'll make it respectable. Even when they got the first two point conversion, I was like, all right, that's cool. Well, there's no way you're going to get two two point conversions in one NFL game. Forget about it in a Super Bowl. And I didn't get nervous until overtime. I was like, oh my, we could like win this. <laughs> And then they got the ball, and then I was standing up the entire time, you know. And my, this was so funny. My my daughter was like, I think twelve days, and that's what I was joking about on my podcast. That I was so happy the Patriots broke the twelve day drought <laughs> in my daughter's life of them finally winning a Super Bowl. She can now she can she can uh, finally move on in the next next chapter as a oh my God. sports ha- fandom. But um, yeah, that was I I I did the craziest quietest celebration dance when when they uh when they scored the touchdown to win it and i was still going like are they gonna call it back you know how many times people run out on the field and like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute so i waited till the confetti came down everybody left the coaches were shaking hands i had to see a ref on tv like or just maybe not see a ref it took me a minute and i was like all right they're not calling it back then that was it in my socks almost broke my neck did you Hard watch? Did you see any like the sounds of the game stuff or anything like the week later? Like those I NFL saw that great things? clip of uh, uh, what's it? Second of the season's all I forget everybody's name. The, the unbelievable catch by um, uh, Edelman. Edelman, where he's just like he just literally goes like, "I got it, I caught yeah, that, I got that one." And then the other guy's like, "No, you didn't." He goes, "Yeah, I did. Check out the screen." <laughs> it just, it just sounded like they were like his house. There's, oh yeah, I got a, uh, I got a lazy boy. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's right over there. Oh yeah, yeah, you did. Like, you wouldn't know that the, what was happening was happening. That this one team was choking, the other one was coming back, and that a championship was on the line. And so much of the, you know, sports world was watching. Just the way they said, I was blown away by how casual. I love that. There's nothing better was. than Mike t- when the players were at the end of the game after Blunt was celebrating with Brady, and then Belichick came over, and Belichick and Brady, this big hug, and Blunt's kind of in there, and then they have this three man hug, and Blunt steps away and goes, he's like, because to Belichick, he's like, you're the greatest ever. And he goes to Ray Lee, and you, you're the fucking greatest ever. And then they all have this three-man <laughs> hook again. I'm like, we got to sign him for seven more years. This guy just captured the moment. Now he's on the Eagles. I, I, I don't know if I ever pitched this, but I had an idea for a new sports package, which was like a, an adult, like rated R football or whatever. Like you, all the players are mic'd up. You make a concession that, you know, that you can't, nobody can get fined. For whatever they say, you know, lately they've oh, it's just been a free for all, yeah. Yeah, and you get to listen to them saying all this shit that you know that they're saying. Like I would love, and, and as long, but the thing that would kill that is then everyone would gossip about it. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's a couple guys that you, you're mad. You just you say. Well, crazy it seems shit. weird that you can call somebody a motherfucker. That's fine. Because everybody in like, all races has mothers, I think. You're trying. You're trying. To, <laughs> yeah, I think mean, that is. That's not like it's. It's got to be specific. Is you're trying to really hurt somebody's feelings with language? Yeah. Um, on, a, on a on a sports field. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, those people might have meant that thing, but I mean, that's it's a hell of a level that we're getting to that you're reading lips now. Have you seen um? Have you seen Area Twenty One with KG? Because he had this like Celtics reunion with Rondo and Big Baby and Pierce, and it was kind of a little bit like no what Ray you're Allen? talking about. They did not invite Ray Allen. Are they still upset about that? 
I think it goes deeper than just him going to Miami. I would think so. Because I never, I wasn't upset when he went to Miami. I was like, he wasn't ours. He was a Sonic. My this rule, is how we got him. Anytime there's bad blood like this with NBA players, I always assume it's a woman or cards. I remember that from your book. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's just, and I think this Rondo Ray Allen thing was probably one of the two, would be my guess. Um, but these guys were so canon together. You were like the it. Andy Cohen of NBA. <laughs> Now, Rondo, when Ray Allen <laughs> said sure this about your girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. was, Let's it, play was, a word was this game. about cards or was this about... I, I feel know. like if they were together, I could get them to tell them what it was about. Yeah, you know it, what? I, it wasn't just Miami. These guys change teams too much. You can't just be like, ah, oh, you went to Miami, you're out. We're never talking to you again. And then they brought up... So they had all these guys on and he came up and Rondo wouldn't even like acknowledge they, they wouldn't even talk about oh, okay yeah you're, so okay. something yeah, i'm gonna go felt, with your instincts felt, That's a, felt deeper but yeah. this thing you would have loved because it was like very loose guys busting each other's balls super candid it was kind of the future of a studio show there are no media people on there it was just the guys they had they, somebody brought a wheelchair out for pierce they're making fun of him in the wheelchair uh, oh, he's still playing did he finally retire he finally retired. He's going to be on uh, that that ABC. Three, that last that was unbelievable. Was perfect. He'll be a really good TV guy because uh, the people who are good on TV don't give a shit. You know, yeah. he'll be on like Paul George choked. He did, ter- you know, but he can say that because he won a finals MVP. And those are the ones like Barkley's good because he doesn't give a shit. He'll just say whatever. Are Skechers, those Skechers they wear, are those are like the new, like remember they said the, uh, the Steve Jobs New Balance was like the old guy sneaker. Like those Skechers. Who's the, wearing the, Skechers? Whatever those things. Those all black with the white soles. They're not wearing Skechers. They're probably wearing Jordans, but they look like Skechers to me. I just noticed like Joe Montana, all these guys, whatever those sneakers are. What are they, Tommy? For old feet. No Tommy's disgusted. He's like any any non-cool sneakers he's out on completely. You ever noticed that? Like there's all, oh my God, these are so <laughs> comfortable. They're like the ugliest sneakers ever. Um, I really didn't think I was going to be out on a limb on that one. They'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, we know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, this has been killing me. Who who is is that Kansas? Who is that band right there? That's the band from Almost Famous. You ever see that movie? Oh my God! That's Stillwater. That's right, because that's the guy from My Name Is Earl right there. Yeah. It's the Echo Sneakers. Echo Sneakers. Oh, is it Echo? Yeah, hey, we have an answer echo, for it. The white, the white souls. Oh, okay. I think it's sponsored the show. So we have. Oh. Uh, all right, my fault. <laughs> I thought those were like, oh, all, I thought I thought all their feet hurt, all their feet hurt. Because to me, wearing a suit with the sneakers is like that that shit from the seventies when women started wearing their power suits and they'd have their sneakers on. And that was like this that in the happened? early eighties. Oh, yeah, that was in the early eighties. That. that was like the look for a second. They would they then they put their their uh, stilettos on at the office. I'm gonna fucking stick this through your chest if you don't sign this deal. And then they put on their <laughs> cute little. Chrissy Everett sneakers and walk out of the building. You guys don't remember that? It was right after Urban Cowboy and right before uh, breakdancing became mainstream. There was this time, you know? This is a tiny if Hillary window. Clinton rocked the fucking sneakers with her pantsuit, I'm telling you, that might have turned it around. Um, F is for family. What <laughs> day is it coming out? It comes out May 30th. And for those of you who haven't watched, we already have a first season of six episodes uh, with the talents of people like Laura Dern, Justin Long, Sam Rockwell, uh, David Koechner, Haley Reinhardt, Mo Collins, um, a zillion people. T.J. Miller. We got a bunch of people, bunch of people on uh, all propping search, me up. And if you search for Bill Burr on Netflix, like what seven things, eight things comes up at this point. How many specials have you done for them? I've at least done four. Five, you just had one a couple weeks five, ago. Five. Five. Yep. You're one of the first. I think ones. everybody's had one a couple weeks ago at this point. <laughs> 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 that's true they're crap i mean they basically bought that corner uh yeah. every week they they're have a new one one a week really really 52 good comic. hours of stand-up comedy are you ready let's buckle it's up better than 15 years ago yeah absolutely yeah yes it no is. now you get to go to saskatchewan people have netflix there I, you know that is true they have netflix in ottawa they have netflix they have everywhere netflix, netflix in vegina Everywhere except North Korea, Syria, and one one other place. Is that true? Yeah. They're in every country except for those, like, uh, there's like... North Korea. Yeah. Well, don't... Look you're probably up. not playing in North Korea anytime soon anyway, I would guess. There's no way I would go up there. Yeah, that's not a That guy is out of his mind. Not a great place for you. 
All right. I still maintain that he should be allowed to shoot off his fireworks in his own his own backyard. I mean, that is his country. He ought to be able to do that. <laughs> Fire, I mean, fireworks should be like. I mean, we bomb. do it. <laughs> the fuck, we're blowing. Up. We had that about, weird place we in to, Vegas. We, we used to test them in the ocean. How many fish did we just randomly kill? People need to eat those fucking things. <laughs> Only we can do it. <laughs> We're saying you're out of your mind, but that guy is out of his mind. I already, I mean, I don't know if it's just propaganda. I already fed his uncle like naked to dogs. You know what it is? He's going through his Michael Corleone years, you know, oh. where, where like Mo Green and all those guys yeah. were coming at him. So he had to feed a few naked people to dogs just to be like, hey, I may be a fat, hairless son of a bitch, but I may look like I'm 15 and ate donuts, but I'm going to tell you something. You fuck with me, I'm throwing you to the dogs. You have to do that as a dictator. And if you're going to be the only fat guy in your country, you got to be throwing down. Everybody else is starving to death. You need fear. So technically, he's doing, you know, if you look at, you know, read the art of war and all of that shit, he's doing everything that he's supposed to be doing. All right. He probably missed a few chapters. <laughs> you know what would be great? I would knew be we were Donald gonna... Trump versus... What is his name? What's Kim Jong Il. Kim Jong Il. Great name. East meets West. Bare knuckle grappling. It's all fucking. They go in there with like the sumo wrestler diaper on. Well, Trump's secretly big. He's like 6'4. Is I think he 6'4? He's a heavy four? favorite. Yeah, he's how, like 6'3 or 6'4. How long is that tie? It still hangs it's down huge. below his balls. Giant you gotta get, is that the Andre the Giant collection? <laughs> so they should have those two. <laughs> Like war shouldn't be legal anymore. It's just it's just enough already. How, Good, let's bro. let's just grow up. Let's just get it. You know, you get Dana White to put together <laughs> like a world leader like UFC. Okay? And then you really will see ageism will get in there cuz you know Trump's an old guy um going to get, going up against him. Oh, that would be great. I don't think old that guy I don't with size though. Once he old once he gets you, if once he, he, he gets on the ground or yeah, he's he's going to finally get to see him. if that hair's real or not when he gets him in a headlock. Yeah, it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon taught us, I thought. I thought he taught us that it might be real. He must have I up. think that I think what was happening was was he was losing it and he he was growing it out and he was wrapping it around. But then since then the like whole like a spaghetti ball. Yeah, yeah. The whole, like the the tags where they spin it around on the spoon. He was doing that on top of his head. Yeah. And then I think the Bosley system came in, so he was able to to then fill it in. But oh, he was so smart under enough. The spaghetti, he was getting like plugs and stuff. But he was smart enough to wait because when he first started swirling around like angel hair pasta, was those were the times where they were putting like the insect legs, the doll hair. Like though yeah. I saw a guy the other day on the plane, and like whenever I see it, my eyes water. Like that looks like it was like a hair nail gun. Yeah, and you're just like, ah, it's going get you, get you, get you. So, um, so I think he, I think he has, uh, I think he's got a, I think he was losing it in the back, and he was swirling it around. If I had to guess, having gone down that road, spaghetti. Followed by the hair plugs, followed by yeah. not as much spaghetti. He brought now in reinforcement. He brought in reinforcement. I think that's a good. And then that's I a good think, call. Uh, but I also think he also knows his brand, and he knows his brand is the extra long red tie, and he knows that he has to quaff it up. So even if it is all real, all right, he might have some extensions up there. Might have gone a little Beyonce. I mean, you never know. There's a lot going on up there. There's more secrets on the top of his head than in the Pentagon. It'd be interesting if. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting if he his, grew his a food band shoe. one has the codes to the top of his head. Oh, did you see those pictures today? Yeah, it's crazy. She slapped his hand away when she went to hold. He went to hold hands with her. They're traveling. They're traveling all these different countries, and I don't think it's going well. The, inter the internets are having fun with it. Oh, come on. The I internets mean, just, are having fun analyzing the pictures. You're not married until your wife slaps your hand away. <laughs> I was going to say. And, and the couple you're hanging out with sees it. It's like, it's great. You give them something to talk about on the way home. <laughs> what do you think they were fighting about? No she, no, she really slapped his hand away. That wasn't playful. I'm sorry. That was not playful. <laughs> it was one of the few times I identified with Trump. It was like, ah, tough to travel with the wife for that long. Yeah, you know what you're happened. Gonna, you're gonna he was probably looking at some beautiful chick. Oh, the stewardess. Oh, yeah. He's probably checking out the stewardess. Oh, he probably was. I'll be over there fucking, yeah. uh, you know, he said hello. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm All the right. free leader of the free world. I'm not going to do the Bill Burr. hacky pussy grabbing joke. <laughs> um, hey, oh. thank you for having oh, me. Oh, wait, hold on. Thanks to Hotel Tonight. The weather changes, your mood changes. Why lock yourself into plans that might change? Especially if you're in Ottawa or Regina. Regina. 
Regina. Not Regina, Regina. Regina. With Hotel Tonight, you'll get incredible deals on awesome hotels. Even at the last minute, booking on Hotel Tonight gives you the freedom and the flexibility to play things by ear. Donald Trump had to use that after getting his hands <laughs> slapped yeah. away. Hotel Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's Googling his own hotels. What do you mean you don't have a reservation? Knowing that you'll score a great price at a great place to stay, download the Hotel Tonight Nice app. word, score. Hotel Tonight, score. They got the whole thing in there. <laughs> Down the Hotel Tonight. <laughs> this is what it's for. Hotel Tonight. I can't wait anymore. What if Kim Jong-il fires a missile? Come on, let's do it. And also, thanks to PropperCloth.com. Every guy knows it's hard to find a dress shirt that fits. Ordering a custom fit shirt has never been easier thanks to Proper Cloth. Create a custom shirt size in seconds by answering just 10 easy questions, no measuring required. They guarantee a perfect fit. Remakes are free. Stop wearing shirts that don't fit. Look your best. Go to propercloth.com slash BS. Enter gift code BS to save $20 on your first shirt. Again, propercloth.com slash BS. Gift code BS. Don't forget to check out the ringer.com. Don't forget about our new podcast, Larry Wilmer, Black on the Air, Against All Odds with Cousin Sal. Bill Bird, thank you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. We'll see you.